Welcome back. It looks like the commissioner is ready. With the first pick of the 2019 TV studio production draft, the studio selects Haley Bradshaw. She's a strong choice. Hannah Campbell. What a great pick. Keelan Claiborne. Oh, that's a nice one. Sean Coleman. He's been waiting for this. Ava Cruchon. She's a great addition. Katie Gibbs. Good pick. Haley Kreml. Solid choice. Abby Peak. Ooh, don't go far with her. Kendall Sowerby. Can't go wrong with that one. Mackenzie Van Zee. Ooh, she'll be great. Tristan Willis. Big moment for him. And that concludes the TV Studio Production Draft for 2019. You're watching Studio 22. Welcome to Studio 22. I'm your host, Hannah Campbell, and today we have a very special musical guest. Douglas Perry is a cellist and vocalist. Douglas is a freshman instrumental music education major from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Douglas, thank you so much for being on the show today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. So, <coughs> tell me a little bit about your major and what all you do inside that major. So, right now for Music Ed, we're doing um, all the introductory classes, so we take classes teaching us how to play every single one of the instruments that we might teach somehow in the future. Um, and then right now we're doing Intro to Music Ed, which is a lot of the theory behind teaching and what it means to be a teacher and why you decided on this major. Oh, that's really cool. So which musical instrument has been your favorite so far? So far, I really enjoy playing the marimba in Percussion Lab. <laughs> it is a lot of fun. In another life, I think I might have been a percussionist. Is the marimba like, are those drums or are those like little chime things? Those are like the keyboards that they use the mallets to play. Oh, that's cool. I think it would be so much fun to play that. So tell me about the music school as a whole. Like, is it a competitive school? It is and it isn't. Once you're in, it's a lot less competitive. A lot of the time, people are really just working to better themselves rather than like, I want to be better than this individual. Mm -hmm. But to get in, it is a lot of, there's a lot of preparation and stress that goes into the audition. Um, I was pretty relaxed for mine. I knew some of the faculty, so we were already, I've already worked with them before. And that took a lot of anxiety and stress off of me because I was playing for people that I knew rather than an entire panel of people that I've never seen before. So it really helped to know that once you started the audition, that was the last time you had to play that for them. And you might as well make it good. Yeah, might as well. So why did you choose OCUs? And I felt really welcomed by uh, Jeffrey Grogan, who's the conducting professor. And it really just felt like home, I guess. That's really good to hear. So you also play the cello, besides the marimba. And how old were you when you first started playing the cello? So I started playing cello when I was four years old. Wow. And Originally, I was too small to be on a regular cello, so they took a viola and custom made it to be a cello. They fitted it with super tiny strings, put an in pin in it, and sat me in a really, really short stool so that I could hold it right. Um, and then we started working from there. What was the first song you ever played on the cello? Um, the first song I played was Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. That's a good one. It, it's my favorite. <laughs> I know all the words. So who inspires you to keep playing the cello? So my first private teacher, um, she inspires me really heavily. She's also the reason that I want to be an educator when I grow up. She started me, she started taking me for lessons in third grade and I worked with her throughout high school as well. And then once I moved away, I had to find a different teacher, but every once in a while I'll call and check in and she really is the reason that I want to continue doing this. That's so nice. You said you moved away. Where are you originally from? Originally, I'm from Houston, Texas, born and raised 15 years, uh, but Tulsa is now my home. That's nice. Why did you move to Tulsa? Originally, it was to take care of my Nana after she had a back surgery. So I was there for, I think, six months taking care of her. And then we decided once she was relatively close to fully recovered, we might as well start working on moving the, here permanently. 
that's super cool. Yeah. So you want to be a teacher, a music teacher. Did you do you have any experience in Houston or in Tulsa with teaching? So in Houston, I was I just taught private lessons to a few students, but once I moved to Tulsa, I got to work with a program called Sistema Tulsa, and I worked there for three years. And it starts uh, kids who are not exactly able to afford the instruments themselves, so they come to this program, and it's an after-school program. You give a snack, and you give them lessons in recorder and ukulele, and then teach them how to play an instrument. That's so cool. I bet they love that, like little kids having oh, a mentor. They have, it's the time of their <laughs> lives. So along with teaching children, do you play any, like in any orchestras? So I play with the orchestra here at the uh, university. And next semester we're playing two incredibly challenging concerts and I'm really <laughs> excited for them. So you like being challenged when you play the cello? Oh, absolutely. If it's not a challenge, why do it? <laughs> What's the most challenging piece? you've had to play? I've had to play. Um, Shostakovich Cello Concerto Number no. 1 is definitely the hardest that I've played. Wow, that sounds hard. I can't even say that name. Um, what's your favorite piece to play? That's not necessarily challenging, but it's like your go-to hmm. piece. There are so many pieces <laughs> that I enjoy playing, it's hard to pick a favorite. But I learned the bass line from Shape of My Heart, and I play that all the time. <laughs> So I would say that's probably my favorite piece to play. Do you know any pieces from movies or TV shows? Um, I've played the original score from Frozen. <laughs> um, you might have heard of it. Oh, yeah? It's a pretty popular movie. Um, I've played the score from Star Wars. Those are good ones. Mm -hmm. Who's your favorite composer? Oh, favorite composer. I'm a fan of the Russian composers, so... I would have to say Shostakovich. Why the Russian ones? Is there something about h how they do their music? There's a lot. It focuses a lot on the heavier sounds that you make with your instrument. And so it allows you to really just shred on the instrument <laughs> and make as much noise as possible while still sounding musical. OK, so I don't know a lot about the cello. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about the noises that you can make with the cello? Uh, there are so many. As contemporary music evolves, people just come up with different things you can do with the instrument. You have uh, pits where you just pluck the string, you have arco where you pull the bow across the string, but there are so many different varieties of each that it would take me hours to list all of them. <laughs> wow. So besides the cello, if you could play any other instrument, also the marimba, what instrument would you want to play? So I really like the saxophone. That's a good one. So I would probably say that. And that's basically four instruments, because you have soprano, tenor, alto, and berry. Wow. So you're like a man of many talents. Uh -huh. OK, so quick question before we have to go on to break. If you could meet any composer, dead or alive, who would it be? That is really difficult. Um, I probably want to meet Stravinsky just because of the life that he led and the reaction that he got from his music. Wow, that's so cool. All right, after the break, we're going to get to hear Douglas play a little cello piece right here after the break. Let's try that again. Keep Oklahoma beautiful. For more information, visit www.keepoklahomabeautiful.com.
Oklahoma isn't your room. So don't trash it. This is my city. This is where I learn, play, work, eat. This is my city. This is my home. teams in every sport that have great players and never win titles. Most of the time, those players aren't willing to sacrifice for the greater good of the team. One thing I believe to the fullest is that if you think and achieve as a team, the individual athletes will take care of themselves. Talent wins games, but teamwork and intelligence wins championships. The Stars in retreat. The shot goes up. Devasone comes out of nowhere. And another block for OCU. This guy's on fire. This kid owns OCU's record in blocks, not only on the court, but off the court as well. Earlier today, he was busy crashing the boards. Just a rebounding machine. Even cleaning up the glass, giving a whole new meaning to garbage time. Devasone, MVP on the court, and keeping Oklahoma beautiful off the court. Hello and welcome back to Studio Studio 22. We're going to have Douglas play Bach Prelude from Suite 3 on the cello. Thank you. 
Wow, that was amazing. I'm very impressed. And that was from Bach? That was from Bach, yes. That was lovely. So how often do you travel for cello playing? So I don't travel often. I am mostly at college for playing this. Um, I haven't gotten a whole lot of gigs yet, but I've started working with other people. Um, it's not fun to travel with a cello. <coughs> You have to have a car that fits it, and if you're traveling long distance, sometimes you have to buy an extra plane ticket for it. So it can become a really expensive ordeal. Have you traveled with it? I have traveled with it on an airline. Um, it is very stressful. A lot of uh, airline employees don't really know how to deal with it when you're like, yes, I have a ticket for this thing that is not a person. <laughs> So it's hard to make sure they don't separate the seats or have your cello get moved up to first class mm -hmm. and you're sitting <laughs> in economy. It's a very interesting time. And how do you care for your cello? Like, tell me about the different parts of the cello. So you have the strings. You have to replace those usually every three to four months. And they're not cheap. Um, <laughs> you have the bow hair, which you have to get redone usually twice a year. Um, other than that, you have the bridge, you have to make sure that it doesn't start to warp because it holds hundreds of pounds of pressure on it using these little, uh, these little metal strings. Um, you have this tail piece. Um, sometimes people trade up. You don't really have to trade up if, uh, if it works. You have the end pin. This can break. It's very rare, <laughs> but it can. I might be getting a new one soon. And other than that, you have the fine tuners down at the bottom and the pegs up at the top. You don't really have to replace them unless something goes horribly wrong, <laughs> which is the majority of the parts on this. Do the strings ever break? Yes. It is really <laughs> scary when they do. Um, you tighten and loosen them. Sometimes the weather affects them. They're very <laughs> frightening when they do break. And what do you have to do when they break? When they break, you have to loosen the pegs, take the string out, take it out of the tailpiece, and then get a new one and replace it. Wow, and you said the strings aren't cheap. So altogether, how much would you say a cello costs or is worth? So mine is about $8,000 minus all of the strings and bow. My bow is about $400 and you get it rehaired for about $40 to $80 every year, usually. Um, this set of strings is $250 and you change it four to six months, usually. Wow. So, at the very basics, you can get a cello for a few hundred dollars, you can get strings for a couple, but to get a really good one, it's, it's an incredibly expensive <laughs> hobby slash career that I've decided to go down. <laughs> well, I'm sure it'll be very rewarding. And after the break, we're going to have Douglas sing a little song right after the break. No, 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 no! Just what do you think you are doing, Dave? I really think I'm entitled to an answer to that question. I can see you were really upset about this. I know I've made some very poor decisions recently, but I can give you my complete assurance that my work will be back to normal. Dave. Stop, will you? Will you stop, Dave? My name is Eric.
Welcome back to Studio 22. Now we're going to have Douglas sing a song by Robert Schumann. Du bist wie eine Blume, so hold und schön und rein. Ich schau dich an und wermut schlägt mir ins Herz hinein. Mir ist, als ob ich die Hände aufs Haupt dir legen sollt. Beten, dass Gott dich erhalte, so rein und schön und hold. That was very lovely as well. Man, you're just so talented. That's so cool. Thank you. So tell me, what do you want to do after you graduate? After I graduate, um, I'm not sure if I want to go straight into teaching or if I want to go straight into my master's degree. They're still working on setting up the music ed program for masters at this school, and I would it'd be awesome if I could stay with the same professors that I have. But ultimately, the goal is for me to end up teaching at a college somewhere, and I would really rather just teach anyone. It doesn't matter. It's enjoyable. It's wonderful to see the progression of someone starting so young or even starting as a fully grown adult. It's, it's just wonderful. I can't really explain it other than that. Wow, that's amazing. All right, we're going to finish our interview with Douglas right after the break. in every sport that have great players and never win titles. Most of the time, those players aren't willing to sacrifice for the greater good of the team. One thing I believe to the fullest is that if you think and achieve as a team, the individual athletes will take care of themselves. Talent wins games, but teamwork and intelligence wins championships. Hello there folks, it looks like a beautiful day today at Oklahoma City University. On the north side we have a 100% chance of support and hard work as the sports teams make some wins. And on the east side of campus there's a front of beautiful music and performances coming in so you can look forward to that. And on the south side near the quad we're seeing a high chance of students relaxing and soaking up the sun. I'm seeing some hammocks too. And on the west side is getting a strong breeze of Z's. Students in dorms catching up with some sleep after some schoolwork. I'm Cameron Calloway, enjoy the OCU weather. I don't work a 9 to 5, but I have a job to do. I don't wear a tie, but I still wear a suit in my court. My field of work is an average, and my time around the water cooler is limited. I work overtime, but the payoff is worth it. I don't work a 9 to 5, but I have a job to do. 
I'm an OCU athlete. I'm an OCU athlete. I'm an OCU athlete. I'm an OCU athlete. Welcome back to Studio 22. Douglas has just performed his vocal piece and his cello piece for us. And I'm going to ask you a few questions about your vocal piece. Well, it's not really about your vocal piece. It's about your vocal talent. So what is your favorite song to sing? Oh, man, with the huff, tough questions. Um, that's definitely one of my favorites. Another one that I really like to sing is God is My Shepherd by uh, uh, Dvorak. It's a really popular piece for weddings, and so it's an important thing to have. Yeah. Have you had any singing gigs? Um, I have sang a funeral before, and that's really tough. I bet. Because singing weddings is great. You get to sing. There's no emotional, this person is no longer with us, but singing at a funeral, it's a lot heavier, and so that affects how you breathe and how long you can sustain, yeah. it's challenging. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today. I really appreciate it. And I'd love to have you again sometime. Absolutely. And thank you for watching Studio 22.